Hello everyone and welcome back to my studio and today I want to show you how the majority of your creations can be done with pan pastels to create entire backgrounds for your coloured pencil or pastel pencil work. This saves time but it also allows you to understand how to mix colours as if you were mixing paint on a palette. It's a dry medium that's extremely versatile. Here are some backgrounds that I created using pan pastels and I only have about half of the full set of about 85 I think colours that are available but I was still able to achieve a wide variety of different shades from what I own and today I want to show you a demo of a watercolour lily as I used pan pastels not only for the background but also for the reflection. Pan pastels are artist quality colours that are contained in cake-like formats in screw top jars and they're fantastic for superior coverage because they have minimum fillers and binders so that pure pigments can lay down really well and this allows you to spend more time with pastel pencils or even add coloured pencils over the top and they're easy to apply they have low dust and so that's great if you're sensitive to such things. When you buy the pan pastels they come with these little tools which are called soft tools and that's spelled S-O-F-F-T and they have these little foam applicator tips that fit snugly over the top of each applicator and they come in different shapes and there's five different shapes there's rounded tips I like the triangular tips because you can get into corners really easily with them uh, you can buy the refills readily available but you don't have to buy them all the time because uh, between colours you can just wipe them off on a piece of kitchen towel. There are other ways to apply other than with these applicators. There are foam applicators that the soft tool company make but you can also use foundation sponges and the only difference really between the the soft tools and ones that you can buy for makeup is that these are a little bit more dense they last a little bit longer but in the long run you will find that the sponges by the soft tool or any sponges once they've been used several times will start to kind of break down a little bit so they will need to be replaced this can be avoided somewhat if you use a light pressure and other tools that you can use well the difference between this one which is the soft tool applicator and just some ordinary regular eyeshadow applicators is again this one's a little bit more dense it's possibly a little bit more like say um, a memory foam but essentially you're going to get the same result and I've experimented with different applicators and when I was looking online I found some gun cleaning tools and these are also very similar and they're very useful for getting into tight corners so you can see I've used the tip of this one and you can also use good old cotton tips and you can also lay down the pigment with brushes you do need a fairly stiff rather than a more floppier brush and you, but you can use any size brush that you like each pan pastel has a name and also a number on the back with a light fast rating one being low light fast and four stars being the highest and the light fastness of a colour or pigment just indicates how permanent it is and how affected it is by light 
which is useful if you sell your art or you want to keep your art for many generations or even if you just want to put your drawing in a sunnier than usual spot and of the 40 that I own they all have the four star rating even intense colors like the red the purple and the blue to begin I mix the colors on a sheet of computer paper and this becomes the palette as it's nice and smooth and on top of that I have a paper towel to wipe off any colors but if colors are similar I don't even need to wipe off between the changes the pigment lays down unevenly at first and the real key to a successful background with pan pastels is to make sure you have enough pigment on the pastel matte surface that I'm using you need to have plenty of layers pan pastels last for absolutely ages so you won't run out too quickly and blending is so much easier if you lay down a good amount and with enough pigment you can keep your pressure light and not grind down the foam applicators. The pastel matte surface is also a superior product and it's made up of cellulose fibres and has an ability to grab pigment and hold on to it avoiding the common problems of fallout or excess dust with soft pastels. So these products work really well together although it is a learning curve because it's a velvety surface and is very unlike typical sanded pastel papers. A build-up of light layers is best, lots of them, to achieve the look that you want and the best thing about using any type of pastels is there aren't any mistakes. Though you do want to go lightly so you don't fill the tooth of the paper too early on. So if you don't like the colour you can just apply another straight on top and amazingly light colours work over dark colours and this is a really great thing for beginners as you can work out your drawing as you go. The colourless blender that I was talking about earlier is supposed to be able to blend colours but it doesn't do that on this surface and just makes everything kind of chalky as it's white so I found it works really much better to use it as an additional white. Titanium white is really super bright white and extremely opaque whereas the colourless blender lays down as a much softer white. Keep your pastel pencils sharp and also use a light pressure just like you did in the background. Most pastel pencils are fairly similar if you're looking to get a set. I happen to like these Stabilo Carbothellos. There's only 60 but you can usually find the right shade as the colours are ones you'll actually use. You can lighten or darken the shades. Sometimes I use a few other colours from brands like Caron Dash or the chunkier Conte Apuri pencils that have even brighter and livelier colours. The Carbothellos are easier to sharpen and I like to use a manual sharpener and I use it gently to avoid breaking the more fragile leads. To get great blends, don't scrub back and forth. Just use single strokes and lift your pencil off the paper to avoid stop and start lines. I don't use tools to blend or my fingers because they contain oils that can act like a mask and that shield that you see me using is a piece of glassine that's found in between the pastel matte sheets when you buy them and it's great for shielding hands while you work and it stops any smudging. If you use this you won't find pastel work in the least bit messy. This water lily is one of my Patreon tutorials. Patreon is a commitment free subscription from only $1 a week and I'd be thrilled if you take a look. In each tutorial I show you how to create beautiful, detailed, colourful and realistic art in real time so that you can follow along. And my lessons will teach you how to create with graphite, charcoal, coloured pencil, pastel pencil, pan pastel, acrylic and airbrushing. To get sneak previews of each tutorial to see my teaching style, visit this page 
on my website. For the final touches, I use the eyeshadow applicators to get into the smaller areas. And notice I've got enough pigment on my paper palette now that I don't need to dip into the pans anymore. And the last thing that I place in are the light sources. It's a good idea to mask off your drawing with a quarter inch edge all around. I don't use fixative with pastel drawings and if you're selling it or taking it to a framer it's much easier to handle this way. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.